This is Alicia Alt reporting from the International Stroke Conference in New Orleans. Wake up stroke patients aren't usually considered eligible for clot busting therapy because the time of stroke onset is not clear. Dr. Doka Manawadu and colleagues at King's College Hospital in London analyzed registry data between January 2009 and December 2010 for wake up stroke patients who received clot busters on compassionate grounds and compared them to patients thrombolized within four and a half hours of stroke onset. There were no differences in intracranial hemorrhage at three months, but mortality was lower in the wake up group at that time point. The researchers concluded that clot busters could be safely given to these patients if they had the same clinical and imaging features as those treated within the current guidelines for the therapies. All our patients for acute stroke are assessed both clinically and imaging based on CT. Their org decisions were made um, by one physician on a case-by-case -case basis. They would have taken the whole of the patient into consideration, both the history that led up to the patient coming, the clinical signs of stroke and the scan findings as well. So there was no predetermined mandate paradigm that would determine one treatment decision down one pathway versus another. So it's an individual physician making a informed decision on an individual patient. We still use imaging based on CT. We have got available CT perfusion for any, any physician that wants to invoke that within any patient that they see with acute ischemic stroke, wake up or otherwise. But the findings on the scans, either the plain CT or the perfusion CT, didn't have to match a specific pattern for that patient to receive thrombolysis or not. So we still really have the same imaging criteria that we've always had. There are many, there are a few studies out there to extend um, time windows for thrombolysis. We, or we are involved currently in the DIAS-4 study, which is using desmotoplase from three to nine hours. And this study also allows a, a wake-up contingent to be randomized if the last time seen well to randomization falls within eight hours. So this study is out there in Europe already. I asked Dr. Lee Schwamm of Massachusetts General Hospital his impressions of the study. What surprised me about the study was that the use of CT scanning alone was able to identify this cohort safely and that they could be treated with similar outcomes. There are several trials that are uh, ongoing right now and one about to start in Europe that are using MRI to prospectively identify these patients and treat them either in an open label manner or in a randomized blinded and controlled manner, but they all rely on MRI. So one of the exciting findings from this study is that CT scanning was able to identify this group of patients effectively. It's, it's, it's reassuring because CT is widely available, both in the developing world as well as the developed world. Um, it's also a little surprising because CT is un, not that sensitive to early ischemic stroke changes. And so if these patients could be selected by CT alone, it would be much more broadly applicable. And I think the findings are very premature. One of the limitations that the author identified was that a different set of criteria may have been used to select these patients, including the use of CT perfusion imaging. So we don't know precisely what criteria were used to select these patients, and therefore the use of TPA in unselected patients would likely not lead to good outcomes. Thank you.